I want to teach you some of the rocks that you should be looking for if you want to find gold. The first rock I'm going to show you is a piece of granite. Anytime you got creeks running through granite, see that? That's nice red granite in there. See that? All those little crystals. Anytime you got water running through granite like this test pan, I guarantee you might find some gold there. Granite is an igneous rock. I know a lot of people out there are going to argue with me and they're going to say, no, Jeff, it's metamorphic. Remember, you got three types of rocks, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. All right, next one is going to be basalt. Now basalt is volcanic in nature. And what you want to do is you want to break it open, take a look inside. If you see any green inside, start panning that area. Test pan it because I'm telling you there's probably gold there. And the last one is this one. It's ugly looking, red mud looking stuff. And it's dry and it's been set down for a long, long time. Anytime you got water running through this, it redeposits the gold out of this into secondary forms of enrichment or secondary deposits. So you want to pan those areas that are like that. I got to tell you about the three S's, schist, slate, and shale. Those three types of rocks are fantastic for gold. Some produce gold, load that is, and others are great trapping it like in placer gold because of the rough edges, especially if it's running perpendicular to a wash. Woo wee, that's a good place to find gold. Ain't that right, Slim? All right. That's right. I'm going to grab this guy right here. That's a backpack. We're going to go up into the bedrock, cracks and crevices, do a little sniping. Because I said it once, I'll say it again. The best gold you ever get to get is the gold that Mother Nature put down. Look at that, there's quartz. They call that float. It's everywhere. Wow, look at this. I don't know if you can see that. That's nothing but iron. It doesn't mean 100% that there is gold here, but when you got quartz and iron in a gold producing area, chances are there's gold. I got bedrock here. We're going to suck it all out. Tell you what, that'll work you. I'm gonna take it up to my panty tub, pan it out, see if we got any gold, and see what we get. Yeah, you're gonna get wet. Man, that's an awful heavy pan. Feels like nothing but black sand in there. I always find my best gold out in granite. That and layers of decomposing schist. All right, come here, take a look at this. Woo, man, I'm dying. Woo, look at all that black sand. That's, that's nothing but black sand. You see that? Holy cow. Come on, baby, daddy needs some gold. Woo, I see a little piece of gold right there. There's another one right there, you see it? Oh, ho, ho, come on, come on, baby. I'm gonna shake that down, I can't wait. Come on, baby. I saw a little, woo, there you go. Look at that, I got a couple pieces right there. I don't know if you can see that, see that? There's one right there, oh yeah. Woo, look at that, look at that flake. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Look at that, I got a nice, Flake right there, see that? And a flake, oh, that's a big one, a big flake. See all these little itty bitty flakes in there? Ooh, let me see if I can tap that up for you. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, finally. I got a flake right there, a flake right there. Oh, that's a big one too, see that? There's a nice flake right there, that's a giant one. And all these little tiny flakes in there all over the place. Don't get discouraged, have the courage to learn all these rocks on your own for the lure of gold, the amount untold can drive men mad once it's known. This is an intrusion related deposit. So you have a granitic mass, usually in the form of a pluton, coming in contact with limestone. And where it's coming in contact, it's actually changed the limestone into a metamorphic rock. You got hornfells, which is nothing more than baked mud. And then of course you got scarns. Gold bearing scarns can be very rich. The veins are not very deep, maybe 120 feet deep. They were pulling out $2,500 per ton. $20 an ounce. Oh my gosh. That's limestone. See that nasty gray limestone in there? And wherever you have these contact zones of granite up against the limestone, a lot of times the metamorphic rock that's created is, is a scarn. Now there's all types of different scarns out there, but the one we're worried about is gold bearing scarn. Whenever you see reds like that I definitely sample it limestone granite I remember that where you get that intrusion if you have any gold inside of the solutions and the steams inside that pluton what will happen is is that the limestone will change the pH balance and then what will happen is the gold will start to drop out of solution and at the contact zones a recrystallization process of metamorphism and so then you're gonna get a layer of scar in there to contact this is what's left of a trestle what they would do is they would build these trestles way out into the middle of nowhere then they would slowly dump the rock dump the rock and that's how they'd get it out away from the mine and then that's how you see these big nice flat piles what some people call tailings but they're not they're called mine dumps and the way they got them out here was these trestles and buried inside of all this is a whole bunch more of these that's how they built these big bridges and then they could just keep dumping and dumping and dumping and they start another one and another one look at that isn't that some nice granite it almost looks like granite diorite which is a mixture of granite and diorite but i don't think it's got enough horn blend in it to make it that 
See all that red material? Remember I told you red scarn? Now I gotta emphasize something real quick, okay? Because I know a lot of you are, might be confused, but scarn is not the same as limonite. Remember that, not all red material is the same. Limonite is usually a byproduct of sulfides that have oxidized out the sulfur and left behind iron oxide and gold, if there's any gold in it. And of course it's all boxy looking, so they call it boxworks. This is scar, and this is a totally different animal. They both can have gold in them, but they're totally different. But just wanted to emphasize that because some people will see a Gaussian and think it's scar. No, it's not. There was three miners that were staying here to, to oversee the mine. Uh, when buyers were shifting hands or trading hands on this mine. So they kept three guys, three miners out here. Gordon, Plate, and Cook were their name, last names. Indians came in here and they saw the white men and of course they didn't like the white men being in their land so they killed Cook outright. And the other ones, Gordon and Plate, they got real scared and I would be too, you know? So they took off uh, headed west on the other side of this mountain. They ran so far out there thinking they were getting away from the Indians but you know what they forgot about? That's right, they didn't bring any water with them. And they started to go insane because they couldn't come back here and there was no water out there so they figured the only way out was to put a bullet in their head and that's what happened they killed themselves it might look peaceful out here right now but back then it was a hostile land anyway I just wanted to give you a history of this place yeah! see this that's limestone big old hard nasty limestone see this that's that decomposing granite you see what I see Look at these colors, see that? Blacks, reds, dark browns. This is what you need to be looking for. This is some beautiful, beautiful looking scars. See that chrysocolla in there? That you have a lot of your porphyry copper deposits that produce gold and your scar deposits. Anyway, whenever you get copper in the mix, that's always, always a good sign. I got this beautiful looking scar right there, see that? What I'll do is I'll sample some of this stuff back here because they were following it and see where they still I got a whole bunch of wasp nests in there too. You gotta be careful with that. This is what I want to show you. You're gonna see these in a lot of your intrusion related deposits that have to deal with gold bearing scarns. What is it? Bog iron. It's almost 100% iron. It's nothing but iron. See, that's solid iron. You find large thick bands of that bog iron. That when you do, you know you're onto a winner. Now, in my years of experience, I found that the best gold is where the vein has a steep dip, and then it has a shallow dip, and then a steep dip. Where the vein has that shallow dip, you're gonna see huge chunks of gold that have formed in there. I know it doesn't make sense, but it'll actually redeposit in there, and you'll find large chunky masses and even wire gold in there. Real quick backstory on the place that we're at. It used to be called the Robinson District. It was founded in 1867. And they found gold here and they rushed in and they mined it out. What's interesting about this place, you have a huge porphyry intrusion here. And of course on the outskirts of that is what? Gold deposits. And I'm gonna talk in great depth about why those deposits are here, how they formed, and what you should be looking for when you're out in the field. Now there are 12 basic models of deposition for gold. There's a lot more than that, but the 12 basic models is all you need to know about. And this is one of them. This is a porphyry or intrusion related deposit. Also iron oxide copper falls under this category as well. Around the Cretaceous time period you had quartz monzonite intruding into limestone. It's a huge pluton. Now most of the time when you see a pluton in a book it's drawn like an upside down teardrop and that's not what they look like at all. They're more tabular in nature. Think of a big water balloon laying on the ground. That's what they look like inside the earth. And as it comes up to the surface it's slowly cooling. As it does so it starts to undergo changes. And this is where Bowen's reaction series comes in. It's very important you understand that because that magma chamber, it can do all kinds of things. It can turn into all kinds of things. It's starting to crystallize. Now this was a quartz monzonite stock, which is of the granite family. As it was cooling, it was fracturing. As it was fracturing, all these minerals from down below in the melt are coming up and starting to fill those voids. That's how you can get porphyry from granite or from quartz monzonite, how it's altered inside the ground. Now on the outside of this alteration, you have other alteration zones that are going on at the same time. You're gonna have scarn, you're gonna have clay, you're gonna have clay with pyrite. On the outside of that, you're gonna have quartz sericite alteration. Then on the outside of that, you're gonna have argillic alteration. So you're gonna have all these bands of alteration going on around this guy. And this is important for you to know. And as it was coming up, it was encountering folded beds of limestone and shale, which you're gonna see a lot in this area. As it comes in contact with the limestone, as you know on these intrusion-related deposits, you're gonna have scarn deposits there. 
Now, scarring is a general term, and you're going to hear that a lot. A lot of your porphyry deposits are going to have scarring deposits associated with them. Now, you have all kinds of scarns out there. You've got iron scarns, copper scarns, gold scarns. There's all different types. You usually find them a lot when you're dealing with some type of intrusion-related deposit. But you can also find them in faults and shear zones and geothermal systems, too. They're not just isolated to intrusions from igneous rocks. There's two types of scarn. I know this is getting complicated, but just stay with me on this. You got endoscarns and exoscarns. And the way you tell the difference is like this. On an endoscarn, the protolith is going to be igneous. And on an exoscarn, the protolith is going to be sedimentary. Protolith just means proto being first and lith being rock. So the original rock before it went through any type of changes. Now the reason why you get scarns is a process called metasomatism. All it means is, is that you have a transfer of hydrothermal fluids from the protolith to the wall rock. So you're gonna see a lot of that in your USGS report. When you see scarn, you're gonna think of the metasomatic process. Now the things you should be concerned with is when you have porphyry copper gold deposits, on the outskirts you're gonna to have tons and tons of scarn. Even though it's a copper porphyry deposit, there can be gold in this scarn. And that's what you need to look for. Also they have gold scarns, and they have what's called a reduced gold scarn, where the percentages are five to 15 grams per ton and those are mined solely for their gold content. Now, most of your copper porphyry deposits, the gold is a byproduct, and your copper and gold scarns are gonna have a high garnet and pyrazine ratio to them, not to mention a lot of iron. And they're real easy to spot, too. So when you find them, you're gonna wanna sample them. But most of your USGS reports is gonna call it a polymetallic replacement deposit. That's its technical name. Of course, a secondary enrichment scarn, and that's what you're looking for, because it can be very rich in some sections, depending on where it is, how it formed, and of course the mineral assemblages that were associated with its formation. Don't let all those big words fool you. It's just scorn. It's the red scar. When you find these things, you're gonna dig down around the bottom here and you're gonna pan this out, screen it and pan it and check for little tiny, like 100 minus mesh gold in there that's leached out of this thing. If there is, then you need to start going down underneath it to get to the better gold because most of it's leached out of this thing for millions of years. And you're gonna find these on the outer edges of these giant porphyry deposits of copper. And yeah, you're gonna get wet. Some of that ground up gold in there. Oh, that's looking nice. What I want you to do is become familiarized with the types of rocks that are in gold producing districts. Now in this particular district, we've got a lot of Precambrian schist. Schist is nothing more than shale that has been squeezed and heated. And of course, you know where shale comes from. Shale comes from mudstone. It's a clastic rock. And as it's pressed and squeezed under low heat, you'll start to see mica form in these sheets and bands. And sometimes you'll get pyrite crystals growing in between these sheets as well. A little bit more heat, a little bit more pressure, and it's changed into slate, which is a metamorphic. So it has gone from sedimentary to metamorphic. More heat, more pressure, it becomes a piece of schist. Now schist is easy to identify because it's foliated and it usually breaks apart really easy. You can see where a lot of the mica is starting to form in the foliation. Now, a lot of times you can also have gold that will form or pyrite that will form in the foliation. Now, why is this important? Because a lot of times in your USGS reports, they're gonna say there's precambrian schist and right next to it, you have quartz. And you can see where the schist was up against here and then broke away and you can see I've got oxidation going on in there. I've got also limonite in there and that's what happens when a lot of your pyrite oxidizes is you get limonite. That's great news because you want the sulfur to go away. You don't want to have to roast it. You want mother nature to roast it. So when you see that red, it could be limonite, which is good because the gold will be left behind, or it could be oxidized hematite or magnetite. This is called bull quartz, and they call it bull quartz because it's barren. There's nothing in it. Along the joints of the quartz, sometimes you can have mineralization in there. Remember, you got the three types of rocks, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. A lot of your gold is gonna be found in metamorphic rock, a lot of it. Most of your basement rock, your continental crust rock is gonna be igneous. And then of course, sedimentary, if it's under enough heat and pressure, turns into what? Metamorphic, you see how that works? And also keep in mind that you got two different types of sedimentary when you're talking about limestone and shales. One is clastic and one is 
bioclastic. Bioclastic just means it's got a whole bunch of seashells and living organisms that make it up. That's what limestone is. And this stuff is just plain old clastic material that's been squeezed like mudstone. But at least know your basics when you go out to a gold producing district and know what the rocks look like that are hosting the gold. Shape clay into a vessel. It is the space within that gives it value. Set spokes within a wheel. It is the emptiness of the hub that makes them useful. Be the space at the center. Be nothing. And you will have everything to give to others.